Um, welcome to this evening lecture. The title of this um, of this lecture is "Is God Coming Back to Life?" Question um, <clears> mark. <throat> In a survey from 2016, a number of Danes were asked the following question. What do you believe is the greatest taboo in society today? Most responded, most said that it was mental disease that was the greatest taboo. About one third said that. Um, but almost as many responded, religion and faith uh, as well as death. So apparently we, we have to do, we are dealing with, um, with a, a, a taboo to some extent, um, this idea, this concept of God, uh, of religion, uh, and, and so on. So how can we look at a subject uh, such as this one here that is so tabooed uh, in many ways in, in, in modern societies, uh, and, and, and perhaps in particular in, in, in modern Scandinavia? Uh, not many people talk openly about God or their relationship with God. How can we look at that, this subject in, in a new way and with new eyes? Um, uh, and Martinus, of course, has quite a lot to offer on this subject here. And what Martinus offers is a concept or an image of, of God that is in many ways very different from, from the one that we know from the different religious traditions <clears throat> that we've seen throughout history. And I, I would like to start with saying something about Martinus's concept of, uh, of God and how it differs uh, from previous traditions, including Christianity. And after that, I'll discuss um, the relevance of Martinus's concept of God today. I'll, I'll take a look at, at current tendencies in science and society today. This painting here is by Michelangelo, of course. It's from uh, 1512. Uh, it's called The Creation of Adam, the First Man. And of course, it's part of the biblical creation story. The painting also says something about the Christian concept of, of God. Here, God is depicted as an elderly white man. Uh, here. <laughs> um, <clears throat> as an elderly white bearded man. And, 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 and God is also, what we learned from this painting also, is that God is outside of his creation in some way. Uh, he's, he's separate from his creation. Um, and of, of course, uh, these different, there's, there's been a lot of pictures and paintings about God, um, of, of, of God throughout history. And these, these paintings, of, of course, reflect the time that they are made in. Uh, it's, it, it's not a coincidence that, that it's a white elderly man that we see here. It's not a woman, for example. <clears throat> well, I, I would like to say just a bit about um, the development of our image, of our concept of God uh, throughout history, as Martinus describes it. Everything that is created uh, changes, it, it develops, and that's also the case when it comes to our images of God. They change, and they have changed historically. Um, according to Martinus, mankind has historically been under the influence of different, of different what he calls cosmic world impulses, which you can see here from, from, from the symbol. There are different, there are lighter and darker world impulses. <clears throat> And this influence is uh, th th this influence from these different from these these world impulses is also reflected in the different images of God that that we form at different times in in history. Uh, so the result or this um, the result of the influence of these cosmic influ of these cosmic impulses uh, is different cosmic world impulses. There is a, some kind of s s strange sound. Some people, I think, are working outside because there were also, uh, you know, some big machinery driving. And it sounds like thunder. Okay. Um, the voice of God, perhaps. Uh, okay, there are these different world impulses. 
Um, on this symbol, you can see uh, the Earth and its mankind, which is here, is under the influence of uh, three uh, cosmic world impulses. Uh, a darker one, this one here, uh, and this one here, and, and, and this one here. Um, this more, this darker world impulse is not as influential today as it used to be. Uh, and it forms the basis of more primitive forms of religion and worship, uh, Martinus says, such as the early nature religions. Uh, and in these early nature religions, you find the idea of animism, uh, which is the idea that we are living in a living uh, world, in a living um, a universe. There are spirits behind trees, there are spirits in, behind bushes, there are spirits in stones, and so on. And you also find the idea here uh, of, of, of what is called polytheism, which is the idea that there are multiple gods. There is not just one god, but there are, that, there are multiple gods. As we all also know from, from, from the Nordic mythology, from Norse mythology, there are many gods and goddesses where Odin is, is, is the father. The other world impulse that we are under influence of is what Martinus called the old, calls the old world impulse, which is this one there, uh, which has formed the great world religions, Christianity, Islam, and so on. And most of these religions, such as Christ Christianity and Islam, are um, monotheistic religions, which means that there is just one God. Uh, and we also know that from the Bible or uh, um, from the first of the Ten Commandments, which says, you shall have no other gods before uh, me. Um, so there's just one, uh, one God. And the, the other idea that you find in, in Christianity, and, 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 and which is particular, particularly um, outspoken in, in, in Protestantism, is the idea that God is somehow outside of his creation. It's a transcendent God. Um, um, God is outside or separate from his creation. The divine is not part of nature uh, as it is in the early nature religions, for example. And this was also what you saw in this painting by Michelangelo, where, where God is somehow separate from, from his creation, or there is a gap between the two. Uh, and we are also under the influence, today we are also under the influence of uh, what, what, what Martinus calls a new world impulse, which you can see uh, here, which is the, the lightest of, of the three impulses. And this impulse, according to Martinus, is slowly becoming stronger and stronger today. What are the consequences of this? What are the further consequences of this, of this impulse? Uh, the, the, this impulse, where are we going uh, today? I think that's an open uh, question that you can, of course, explore in more detail. Um, uh, but, of course, Martinus has his analysis here. And it's clear, it's clear if you take a look at the world today, if you take a look at science today, that something interesting is happening um, around us in society, in parts of philosophy and science, which I return to later. Um, but according to Martinus, his own work is also part of this new world impulse. Um, and, and his analysis is that with this new uh, world impulse, a completely new relationship with God is being born. A completely new image or concept of God is gradually being born here on, is gradually formed here on, on earth. Uh, or at least that's, that's, the, that's the claim of Martinus. <clears throat> but what does Martinus then say about uh, God? What is his concept uh, of God? There is a passage here uh, in, in, in the eternal world uh, uh, picture where Martinus asks the following uh, question. After having found the living being's analysis and the life principle of the universe, beings within beings and thus life within life which makes the whole universe alive. How do we then, in this infinite and eternal ocean of living beings, find that being who is the one who throughout the history of all mankind and disguised in many different forms, names and perceptions, is the cultiva cultivated and worshipped Godhead? 
According to what we have already seen, we can turn this question round and ask, where is the eternal Godhead not? Where is the eternal Godhead not? And Martinus also gives an answer to that question. We have already seen that all existing living beings constitute an inseparable unit. There is thus no being whatever whose life and existence as a living being is not dependent on a, a macro being. But can this macro being be the almighty Godhead? No, certainly not. It lives itself as a micro being in a macro being's organism. <clears throat> Since the universe is infinite, then the Godhead is neither, is neither spiritually nor physically linked to any order of magnitude or quality. He thus deviates from all other living beings by constituting all sizes and all existing qualities. How else could he permanently be omnipresent? How could he be all-wise, all-loving and omnipotent? How could he, without this con condition, be able to be the real and absolutely only true Godhead? So you can say, this is, this is sort of... Martinus's concept of God, and, and his concept of God is similar to the monotheistic concept of God that we saw from, that we know from, for example, Christianity. The idea that there's just one God. Um, to worship the earth or to worship the sun uh, or whatever is a form of idolatry, Martinus says. It is, it is to worship the sons of God rather to, than to worship God. But at, at the same time, Martinus's concept of God is also similar to the early nature religions. Because according to Martinus, God, re um, God reveals himself through all living beings, through plants, animals, humans, planets, and so on. God is not something separate from his cre creation. Uh, he's part of his creation. Nature is in God, and God is in nature, in all of nature. <clears throat> this is Martinus' um, main symbol, <clears throat> which gives, uh, which gives uh, a symbolic presentation of, of the Godhead, of the eternal Godhead and the eternal sons of God, as he calls us, or as he calls all living beings. But before I, I get to this symbol, Ella, or look at that symbol, I'll just shortly look at the three symbols that the main symbol, that this main symbol uh, is consists, uh, consists of, and, and which um, Martinus presents just before the main symbol. Um, so the main symbol actually consists of these three uh, symbols uh, here. Uh, and, and, and what they show is that, that the, Godhead, uh, the, the Godhead is actually composed of three parts. Uh, and, and composed of three parts which are inseparably linked to one another. They constitute, Martinus says, they constitute a triune principle. Uh, there, is, there is an I, God has an I, uh, an ex it. Um, God has uh, a, a creative faculty, a creative faculty, X2. Um, and then God is also. Uh, uh, composed of also also consist, um, consists of that which is created, which is X3, which in the case of God is the entire universe, which is uh, like God, God's organism. Um, the entire creation is God's, or, is God, God's organism. So God is composed of these uh, three parts or components. Um, so what we see here is... Uh, is actually a symbolic presentation of a living uh, being. And, um, and these three symbols here, in principle, are identical to Martinus' symbol of a living being, which, of course, is, is this one uh, here. They are, in principle, identical. <clears throat> and and this, 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 this symbol here of, um, of a living being also shows that e that each one of us uh, that each living that each living being uh, has an eye 
each living being has a creative um, faculty and um, an ability to create and to experience, and each living being has a consciousness or, and, and an organism, X1, X2, and X3. And this also applies to God. Uh, it's the same principle. So is God a living being then? Uh, is God a living being in, in, in the same sense that we are living beings? Well, in principle, yes, God is a living being in, in the exact same sense. Does God have a form of experience of life in the sense that we also have, an, uh, have a form of experience of life? Yes, that is, that's the case according, uh, according to Martinus. But what is then the exact, the, the exact um, relationship between God and all the living beings? each with their own organism, each with their own consciousness. Um, there are many questions that you can ask here and you can go into detail with, and some of these questions uh, are also quite complex questions, actually. Um, but I, uh, I have some, uh, a couple of slides here um, where Martinus answers some of these questions, um, including how is it that God... Uh, is related to all the living beings. And in, uh, in Leavitt's uh, Bo, the Book of Life, Volume 6, uh, Martinus has a very fine description of the Godhead, which I would like to read. The Godhead experiences life through all the living beings of the universe. These are thus his sensory organs. Through them he creates and experiences. But since all living beings constitute his sensory organs and there is nothing outside of God, it is in principle himself that he experiences through the living beings. Every living being's experience is his experience. Thus every living being's thoughts, sorrows, concerns, pleasures and experiences of happiness are also his experiences. In fact, no living being can have any kind of experience that does not express God's sensing and is the experience of God. Thus, as we have seen, all living beings in the universe are God's instruments for experiencing, manifesting or creating. Through them, the Godhead experiences himself and through them he unfolds his consciousness his will, his life, and his way of being. I think that is a very beautiful <coughs> quote. <coughs> I have another one. Um, here's another passage. All living beings are the Godhead's organs of manifestation and experience. This enables the Godhead to sense or experience through all existing living beings, organisms, and sets of senses, just as he can create by virtue of all living beings' ability to manifest or create. This in turn means that the organisms, or X3, of all existing living beings together constitute the Godhead's organism, or X3. The superconsciousness or faculty to create, or X2, of the living beings together constitute the Godhead's X2. In the same way, the X it, or I, of the living beings together constitute the Godhead's X it, or I. Since all existing living beings, organisms of experience and manifestation, together constitute the, God, the Godhead's organs of experience and manifestation, it here becomes evident <clears throat> as a reality that the Godhead is omnipresent, almighty, all-wise, and all-loving. <clears throat> so in this sense, <clears throat> sorry, in this sense, there is no distinction, there is no gap between the Godhead on the one hand and the living beings on the other hand as we see in, for example, Protestantism. Uh, they are basically one and, this, and, one and the same. The living, they, they, they are basically one and the same. So what is special about God? Because there is something that's special about God. God is not just another living being. <clears throat> and um, Martinus says, oh, where is it that God uh, differs from the sons of God, from, from the living beings? 
Well, um, according to Martinus, as he says, um, that God is a, is a macro being that is not at the same time a micro being in another macro being. So God is a macro being that is not at the same time a micro being in another macro being. God is, in a sense, the ultimate macro being. There is nothing outside of God. Um, God is uh, in everything, and everything in, uh, is in God. Um, so, so we have an, an external world. Uh, there are other living beings than just me, uh, but this is different um, in the case of God. There is no, God doesn't have an external world or a world that is outside of uh, God. Uh, in a sense, it doesn't make sense to talk about something being inside and outside of God. Uh, it doesn't make sense to talk about something being inside of God because this suggests that there is something outside of uh, as well, and there isn't. Uh, God is in everything, and everything is in God. We are the eyes and ears of God, Martinus says. We are the God. We, we are we are the material that that God is made of. My organism is made up of living uh, beings, of organs, cells, and and so on, which enable me. Uh, to create and to experience. But at the same time, my organism is also a, uh, um, a dwelling place for living uh, beings. In a way, I'm a godhead uh, for my micro-individuals, Martinus says. And exactly the same principle applies to the godhead as a whole. Uh, the godhead is this all-embracing, omnipresent living being that we are all part of. Uh, and which expresses himself through us, re reveals himself through us, through every single uh, living beings, from tiny atoms and electrons and so on, to the, um, to the entire physical universe. And this is also clear if we take a look at the main symbol again. Um, where we also see how everything is a correspondence with God. If God expresses himself through every single li uh, living being, then it's always God that we meet uh, in our neighbor. Um, we, are all, we are always engaged in an ongoing conversation with God, in a never-ending dialogue with God, which is also evident from this, uh, this um, main symbol. We have uh, God's eye here, um, the eye of God, and then uh, the living beings here uh, entering in a dialogue, in an eternal dialogue with, with God. And regardless of where we are in our evolution, of whether we're in the plant kingdom, uh, the animal kingdom, the, kingdom the, the real human kingdom, or wherever we, we are, we're always in a dialogue with, um, with, with God. And we can see this, this main symbol as the symbol as the Godhead, um, um, as a symbol of the Godhead as a whole, who, uh, who is in dialogue with, with all living beings. But we can also see it as a single living being, as, one, as, as each one of you, or as me uh, who, uh, here, as a macro being who is in correspondence with its micro beings or micro individuals. So there are different ways of interpreting uh, this main uh, symbol, which Martinus also mentions. Yeah, the spirit of God upon the face uh, of of the waters, which also shows you know, this 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 idea that God is present everywhere and in all respects. Uh, God is behind all the, all the religions, uh, even behind materialism and godlessness. Uh, behind all of this is the the spirit of God, the consciousness of God. Um, <clears throat> Okay, uh, now I'm going to change my focus uh, a bit. What you see here was the... <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to look a bit at what goes on in uh, society and in science today and um, uh, also um, discuss the, the relevance of Martinus's concept of God and, and the relevance of his analysis when it comes to our, our uh, when it comes to understanding what goes on in in the world around us, this was the cover of Time magazine 
April 8, 1966, Time magazine, I don't know if you know it, is this huge um, American news magazine. And this cover, which of course says, is God dead? Question mark. Um, was highly criticized at the time. It was highly controversial. It was seen as highly controversial. It was uh, criticized um, um, in the broader public. It was criticized by church leaders and so on. Um, in 2008, um, which is not so long ago, um, Los Angeles Times um, named this issue among 10 magazine covers that shock the world. Um, <clears throat> and, 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 and what the cover points to was, um, was what was all, already obvious at the time. Um, the great world religions uh, that have guided and, and, and inspired people throughout the ages are dying. Um, um, they are losing followers. And we, of course, we also know that from, from Denmark, from a Danish and Scandinavian context, but it's the same thing that's happening um, all, over, all over Europe, for example. Um, and of course, this is also Martinus's analysis, that, 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 that the old world, um, world religions that are sort of born out of the old world impulse are gradually um, dying or are going through a process, process of, of death. Um, th this question, is, is God dead, what, was inspired by a famous qu quote by the German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche, uh, which, which uh, said in a, in, a, in a book that he wrote in 1882, uh, also sparks Zarathustra, and, and he, says, uh, he, he said famously, God is dead, God remains dead, and we have killed him. And this is, uh, of course, this was very provocative in its time, uh, and it definitely also was in, in, in 1966. But what, what Nietzsche wanted to say with this was not that God as an actual figure uh, uh, has died. Uh, he's not saying that once God lived, but now he's, he's dead. Uh, what he's saying is that for us, for, for, for us, God is dying. He's sort of dying in our culture. Or oh, that was Nietzsche's analysis back in the uh, late 19th century. And of course, he was right uh, in, in many ways. We've gone through a phase of materialism and atheism, of, uh, a phase of uh, godlessness, and, and what has been happening for many, many years throughout the, the 20th century is that, that's, that religion, faith, and God uh, have gone through some form of uh, death process. Um, and that's also why it is, in many ways, it has been very controversial to talk about God in the public sphere, uh, for example, in, 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 in Denmark. But that was in 1966. Um, what about today? What is uh, happening today? Is God coming back to life? This, uh, this, this title here says, Er Gud ved at Is God coming back to life? Um, and this, this article here, which is from Copenhagen Institute for Future, uh, Future Studies, well, it suggests uh, that perhaps God is coming back to life today. And the article is from 2004, so it's a rather recent uh, article. And it points to some of the changes that is, some of the more recent changes that you can observe in society in our, in our, and in our culture today. I, I would like to um, read really, Read this, uh, this, this page here, and I've translated it into, into English. And it says, We live in a time of religious change, but where are we going? We cannot say with certainty where the tendency towards increasing religiousness will bring us. But it's clear that the old industrial society and its logic, and its logic are being challenged in several respects. In 10 years' time... One can imagine four diff different scenarios based on, on megatrends such as individualization and globalization. 20 years ago, religion was almost a taboo subject in society, and it was considered embarrassing to talk about God in the public debate. 
it's not like that anymore. Today, leading politicians, cultural personalities, and church leaders participate in public debates about God. In newspapers, radio, and TV, we can follow discussions about everything from films about Jesus and books about the prophet Muhammad to religious rites in Guantanamo. What has happened and where are we going? So this was the analysis back in 2004. That it sort of, they could sort of detect that, that new things were happening today. And they, um, in the article, they also imagine uh, four different, different scenarios, um, future scenarios, which I, I, I won't go into detail with uh, here. Um, but it, it, it's clear, if, if you take a look at the world today, that something, that a lot of things are, are, are happening. Um, <clears throat> and there's also quite a lot of um, research in this, and there is quite a lot of literature um, about these things today. There are several studies today that, um, that suggest that perhaps religion is uh, on its way back in the public sphere. It's on its way back in public debates and so. And even here in, 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 in Scandinavia and um, in the rest of um, Europe, uh, and perhaps even God in some form is back, is going, is sort of reappearing um, in the public sphere. Perhaps we are not using that word, but we are using other words. Um, but it's something interesting or something new is, is sort of uh, about to happen, or at least that's the analysis among uh, sociologists, many sociologists and, and, and others. There are also um, researchers that suggest that perhaps we are even on the edge, we are even on the edge of a new era or a new age, um, uh, where, for example, we are going to see uh, more dialogue between religion and, and, and science. Um, and, I, I mean, what is all that... Um, this about uh, what is it that that we can observe today uh, in in the world? There are many many things that are that are happening. For example, this increasing dialogue between religion and and science. Um, uh, the the great world religions are are losing members, uh, as I've mentioned. There are many people today who prefer to put together their own their, their own belief system or their own world picture. Uh, Many people uh, uh, prefer to take a bit of that and a bit, a big, a bit of that and a bit of that, and then and then put together these different things, uh, these different sources of inspiration, and create their own um, world picture. Uh, so, so we go shopping, so to speak. We shop a bit of there and there and there, uh, and that's of course that's probably something that you know from 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 your life. It's something that I know from my own life that I'm I'm inspired by many different. Uh, kinds of sources, in particular Martinus, of course. And there are a lot of people who have grown tired of the old dogmas, the old religious dogmas, who no longer find inspiration in these dogmas. Um, but at the same time, my experience is, at the same time, uh, there is a sort of spiritual, uh, spiritual hunger uh, today, and, and also a spiritual hunger that perhaps is not being completely satisfied. Because where do people go if you've grown tired of religion? Then, then you cannot go there. And you cannot go to science either because um, um, science doesn't really has, has that, have that much, much to offer when it comes to feeding our spiritual uh, and, and moral hunger. Um, so how can we satisfy that hunger? Uh, and how, how can we do it in a way, this spiritual hunger, and how can we do it in a way that fits with the with, with the modern world. That fits with with being a modern intellectual human being. Um, can we somehow return to God after God is dead? Is that possible? Can we can we imagine that we could return to God? That we could build up an interest in God again after atheism, after materialism, after godlessness? Is that possible in some way? And that is Martinus's claim. Yes, that is possible. And that is ex exactly what is going on uh, today. And it is, yeah, it's what's going on today. And this is just, um, there is a Google program. <clears throat> I don't know if you, <coughs> sorry, I don't know if you um, know it, but, but there's a program that, there's a Google program where it can measure 
the frequency of words and sentences over time. <clears throat> and this is then a frequency of the word God over time. How often is this word used in, um, in the literature? <clears throat> in comparison with other words? Is, is it used uh, uh, more or not? Well, as you can see here, um, the, the word God is, is apparently being used more and more. Uh, and there's been a quite rapid uh, increase from around the year 2000 or so, just before perhaps. Um, <clears throat> and we are actually, today we are above the level uh, that you find uh, around the year 1900, which is... Uh, uh, which was a surprise to me. But if you go further back, if you go 150 years back or 200 years back, then you can see that God is being used much more in the literature than today. But still, uh, I mean, um, something is going on, or it's, it seems that something is going on. There is a, somehow a, a, a renewed interest uh, uh, in, 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 in God or the concept of, uh, of God, if, if you measure it in, in, in this way. Of course, this, this, uh, this graph here also reflects some very, very complex changes that are taking place in the world today. Uh, the, 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 the rise of uh, fundamentalist Islam and so on. So it's, it, it's a difficult and complex uh, picture that you see out there. Uh, this, uh, this, this graph doesn't say anything about how the word God is actually being used. How is it actually being used? In what context is, is it being used? It's just saying that it is being used more than it, than it used to be. But still, I think it's interesting. Yeah. <clears throat> I would like to take a look at what's, what goes on in science today. Uh, because there are some very interesting things going on there. In quantum uh, physics, for example, in the research on consciousness... Um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of interesting things are, are, are going on there. And here's some, I, I, I've picked uh, um, a bit of, I, I've selected a bit of literature that, uh, that, that looks into some of these changes and that is also part of these changes that you can find in, in science today. And this, just, just to give you some short, some, some, some quick examples, this is a, a uh, book by Rupert Sheldrake, the British biologist Rupert Sheldrake, The Rebirth of Nature, Science, sorry, The, the rebirth, of, rebirth of Nature, Science and, and, and God. This was also highly controversial when it, when it came out. I think it was in the 80s or, or, or 90s. Another book, another book here, I don't know if you can read it, but it says, Mind and Cosmos, Why the Materialist New Darwinian Conception of Nature is almost certainly false. Um, and it's written by Thomas Nagel, who's a famous philosopher of consciousness. He used to be a, a, a materialist, but recently he's changed his, his views. And that is, to some extent, what is going on in the philosophy of consciousness uh, today, uh, quite surprisingly. Another one here, <clears throat> it's written by David Chalmers. Some of you probably know him, the character of consciousness. And just of a fourth one here that I'll mention, which is called Panpsychism, uh, Contemporary Perspectives. And this is a, a very recent book from last year, um, I, I think. And I will, I, I mean, a lot of interesting things are happening in the philosophy and in the science of consciousness today. Uh, and some very surprising things also. And I, perhaps you can even ask the question, is God coming back to life in the philosophy of consciousness today, in the, in the scientific study of consciousness today. Uh, and I've come to learn from studying some of this, this literature that the question of God, uh, the, the question of God and the question of the existence of God is closely related to the question of consciousness. So the question of consciousness and the question of God sort of go together um, in a way. Traditionally, of course, and it's still the case today, but, but traditionally most researchers have been materialists when it comes to explaining um, consciousness. They have seen consciousness as something that emerges from dead matter. And that's the sort of basic idea uh, that consciousness somehow uh, 
emerges from matter that is not already conscious. And, 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 and the typical idea is that consciousness somehow emerges from or is the result of physical processes in the brain. That's the typical materialist conception of consciousness, that it's located in here, in, in our physical uh, brain. But the problem, <clears throat> there is a problem with this view. And the, the problem is that if matter is not conscious already, then how can consciousness emerge from nothing, so to speak? If matter, if physical matter is not consciousness or is not conscious already, then how can consciousness emerge from nothing, out of nothing? Uh, that's very, very difficult uh, um, to see, and that is a, uh, a basic problem. That is a hard problem in the scientific study of, of, of consciousness today. How can we explain consciousness uh, at, all, uh, at all? And it seems that, that materialism and, and materialist philosophy is incapable of explaining consciousness. That now, this, this problem has then led an increasing number of philosophers and scientists uh, to study consciousness, that, that study consciousness, to explore uh, the idea of what is called panpsychism, which is an idea that's becoming increasingly popular in, this, in the scientific study of, of consciousness. And it's the idea that all matter is conscious in one way or the other. Our body, the idea is that our body, for example, is made up of, uh, of matter that is consciousness, that, that is conscious all the way down um, to the level of, of quarks, quarks, these uh, tiny, tiny elementary particles uh, that physicists, uh, physicists um, talk about. So quarks, uh, uh, electrons, um, electrons um, atoms, and so on, and, and, and even quarks has, has some kind of, uh, has some form of experience of life, is the idea. There is a way that it feels to be a quark, uh, there is some form of inner experience that is present, even at the level of these tiny, tiny elementary particles. So the idea is that we are made up of matter that is alive. Um, in a sense, we consist of living beings. That's the claim in a scientific uh, context, and it's, it's a serious claim. And of course, that's also the, uh, the, 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 the claim of Martinus in, in what he calls the principle of life units, that life is made up of life, that living beings exist in other living uh, beings. So perhaps we are seeing in, this, in the study of, of, of consciousness today some form of beginning or rudimentary conception of the um, principle of life units. And... Another thing that, that is also interesting here is, is that Martinus calls, actually calls the principle of life units for the first glimpse of the existence of a Godhead. So there is some, something interesting, is, they are onto something interesting uh, here. And there are some scientists um, which are then asking, well, if we accept panpsychism, uh, this idea that all matter is conscious, well, what are the further consequences of this? Uh, does it mean that there is consciousness in planets as well, in stars in well, in, as well, in galaxies as well? Uh, and of course, these are uh, highly controversial ideas. Um, <clears throat> this is a screenshot uh, of a conference. I don't know if this is a screenshot uh, um, of a conference that was that was held at the University of Birmingham, um, November last year. And this, is a, uh, and this conference um, was about pantheism, panpsychism, and cosmopsychism. And these are all, uh, some of them are rather new ideas and new concepts. And, pan and panpsychism, of course, is this idea that all matter is, uh, is, is, um, um, is, is conscious and, and cosmopsychism. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard that word before, but it's, it's the idea, um, panpsychism and cosmopsychism are both different theories about consciousness. And, and cosmopsychism is the idea that the cosmos as a whole has a mind, that the cosmos has a mind of its own. So this is apparently, this is being discussed uh, in universities. Uh, there are scientific publications about these things. Uh, this is being discussed among researchers today. Of course, it's not mainstream in any way. 
It's not, it's not a mainstream view. It's not at the center of science, scientific concern, so to speak. It's, it, it's at a philosophy department. But I, it's, it's still very, very interesting, I think, and it's, in a way, it's, it's very surprising. And of course, Martinus has a lot of interesting insights uh, to offer in this context here. <coughs> One that, that, um, <coughs> that explicitly talks about God in, 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 in relation with consciousness is, is this British biologist, Rupert Sheldrake, which you can see uh, here. Uh, and Sheldrake is a, uh, yeah, today a famous um, British biologist. He's been called the most controversial man on, on Earth. Uh, so he's, it also says something about that he's a controversial scientist. Um, <clears throat> and, and what Sheldrake says is that, well, um, could it be that the universe as such is conscious? That, that, um, that these guys that are working with cosmopsychism uh, and, pan and, and panpsychism, that they are right? That it's a, it's a conscious, conscious universe that we are living in. And um, according to Sheldrake, if we adopt a panpsychist um, worldview, th this idea that, there is, there, that, that all matter is conscious in some way, then it's reasonable to think, according to, Shel to Sheldrake, that the sun is conscious and the stars are conscious as well. And even that the entire galaxy might have a mind of its own, uh, that the whole universe has a, a mind. And the next question then is, is that God? Um, <clears throat> I heard a lecture that was given by Sheldrake uh, a few years ago where he describes how there is today a certain panic um, among materialist philosophers and uh, of, of, of consciousness. Because what is actually going on here in this, uh, this scientific uh, field? Um, there are prominent philosophers who are playing with the idea of panpsychism. It, it sounds a bit religious in a way. Um, and, and, this, and this idea has some wide, has some far-reaching consequences. Um, of course, in, in, in much of this literature and the, in these scientific contexts, the, the word God is rarely used. Sheldrick um, uses the, the, the word, but it's, 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 it's rarely used. Um, often, the, it's, it's words such as the consciousness of the universe or the cosmic mind and so on. Um, so, it's, um, so apparently, this concept, God, is, is a difficult one to deal with. But it's God that they're talking about, at least if you see it from the perspective that Martinus offers. Um, <clears throat> tonight at 9 p.m., uh, there is a video um, with an interview with Sheldrick, with Rupert Sheldrick, which is going to be show, uh, shown here in this uh, uh, lecture hall. Um, I was in London uh, in January together with, with two, uh, um, two other guys. Uh, I am here, and, and, and Jakob Kølle Christensen, uh, Roald Bungård, and Rupert Sheldrick, uh, Rupert Sheldrick here. And, and, and um, we did an interview um, with him about, about science, about consciousness, about uh, God, and, and, and about why, why is it that we need a new world picture today? Uh, and there are many good reasons for that. Uh, it, it, uh, we, 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 need, we need a new um, world picture so that we can uh, explain consciousness, what consciousness is all about. We need a new world picture for many, many practical reasons as well. Um, and of course, you are, you are very welcome um, tonight. It's uh, um, nine o'clock and you are to, to come and see the, in the interview. It's, a, it's about 40 minutes uh, or so. Uh, yeah. Okay, Time Magazine in 50 years uh, time, maybe, if it continues like this. Uh, Martinus, death does not exist. And it, it's a double issue, even. Uh, the Danish writer, Martinus. Maybe it's too optimistic. I don't know. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> 
What you see here are two issues of Time magazine as well. Uh, I, I would like to end with these uh, uh, two. And this one here, which, which says, is truth dead? Is truth dead? Is, uh, is an issue of Time magazine from April 2017. So it's from last year. And of course, it, 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 it's inspired by, by, the, by the, the, the one from 1966, which says, is God dead? But that's, apparent, that's not as relevant a question to ask today as this one here, is truth uh, dead? Uh, and and, and this, this, this magazine cover was made with reference to Donald Trump and with reference to what has some, sometimes been called post. We are living in a post-factual society. Uh, we are seeing a post-truth politics. Uh, we, we are, are we entering a society after truth? Uh, it, has truth died? Uh, it does not have any value anymore. Um, are, are we witnessing a politics after truth? Uh, has truth disappeared from, from, from politics and so on? Um, so this is interesting, I, I think. Um, and Time magazine is quite good at sort of capturing tendencies in society. So what is it that we are actually witnessing? Uh, well, perhaps it's the death of central authorities, you could say. First, religion and God. Is God dead? Religion and God. Um, and then science and truth. At least these authorities, these major, uh, major um, authorities, religion and science uh, have been major authorities uh, throughout, uh, through, uh, throughout the, the 20th century. And religion has been a major authority for ages. Uh, for, for, for many centuries. Um, <clears throat> so these, these authorities are, are, are somehow being challenged today. Um, and Martinus also um, describes our time today as a time of decline or as a time of Armageddon, he even says. This other issue here um, is, is, uh, is, was published May 2017, so it was just published one month after this issue uh, here. Um, <clears throat> and what it, it, it says here, it says, beyond he or she. And what it basically asks, or you can, rephra or you can rephra rephrase this as a question, um, what it basically asks is, is, is gender, is gender dead? Uh, is gender dead? Is religion, is God dead? Is truth dead? Is gender dead? This is neither a man or a woman. It's both Highly interesting, of course, also from the perspective that Martinus offers. Um, um, so a lot of interesting things are going on today, and how can we interpret all of this chaos in many ways it is? How can we um, interpret this from the perspective that Martinus offers? Um, well, according to Martinus, um, uh, death is, uh, as he said, Death does not exist, or death is an illusion. Death is also a birth, or it, 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 it involves the birth of something new. So what is it exactly that is dying today, and has been dying uh, for, for the last hundred years or so, and, and many years um, more perhaps? What is it that is dying today? Uh, and what is it that is being born today? I think that's an open question, and I, I don't have any sort of ready-made solution or answer to that question. But perhaps you could say that what is dying today and has been dying is um, the established religions. What is dying today is the established religion, is the image and concept of God that you find in the established religions. Uh, what, what is dying today is a blind faith in science. Um, and, and perhaps all, the, all, um, all of this is part of a learning uh, process. Uh, we need to develop, we in, through all of this chaos, we, we, we develop our own ability, uh, our own ability to judge. We become our own authorities uh, in a way. We develop our own relationship with God, our own understanding of God. We, we discover the truth inside of us um, rather than just blindly re relying on what authorities tell us. Um, uh, and, and of course, that's also the case when it comes to gender, the, the whole gender question, the question about our gender and sexuality. Who am I? Um, where do I belong? What's my gender? 
Uh, but of course, I mean, it's 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 an open question how you can in, um, interpret all that's going on in um, in the world today. But it's clear, according to Martinus, that we are living in a time of transition, where an old world culture is is dying and a new world culture is being born. And these magazine covers um, capture all that very very um, nicely, I, I think. And what we see today, of course, is not the final result uh, of this, of this, uh, of the birth of this new world culture. It's just the be it's just the beginning, or it's perhaps just the beginning uh, of something completely new. Thank you very much.